Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our next example of how we use graphical methods to solve one-dimensional motion problems. We have a truck. The truck starts at rest, accelerates at 2 meters per second square for a certain amount of time, which is unknown, until the truck reaches 20 meters per second, then continues on for 20 more seconds with zero acceleration, meaning constant velocity, and then for the next 5 seconds it slows down back to 0 meters per second. The acceleration at that point is not known. So let's solve that problem using the graphical technique. In this case, I am going to solve it using an acceleration versus time graph and see what we get with that. So we're doing an acceleration versus time graph. There's acceleration. There's the time. Remember that the area underneath the acceleration versus time graph equals the velocity. So we have a constant acceleration at 2 meters per second for a certain amount of time. So there's 2 meters per second. Two, and we don't know for how long, so the time is unknown. So T1 equals unknown, so I'll call this T1 for the first segment of the problem. Then for the next 20 seconds, there's zero acceleration. So for the next 20 seconds, so from there to there, this period here is a 20 second period. And then for the next five seconds, there's a negative acceleration back down to the velocity of zero. So we have a negative acceleration for the next five seconds. So this here would be a five second period. And the acceleration is not known. So that's A sub three is not known. So we'll put a question mark there. All right. What we do realize is that, again, this, the area underneath this graph, let's call it A1, represents the velocity gained during that period of time when it goes from 0 to 20 meters per second. That means the area here is 20 meters per second. That will allow us to find the time. And this area here should be a negative 20 meters per second. So this is A2, and that should, that should be equal to negative 20 because um, we, the velocity goes back to 0 when we're done with the end of the 5 seconds. So what we can say then in this case is that the sum of a1 plus a2 must equal 0. And a1 is equal to the uh, height times the width. So that would be h1 times w1. The height would be 2 meters per second squared. And the width would be t1, which we don't know. And of course, a1 is equal to 20. So we can say that 20 is equal to 2t1 or divide both sides by 2, t1 is equal to 10 seconds. So that's how we find the time. And let's see, the question in this case would be, what would be the total time, t total, is equal to question mark. And of course, if we answer that question, we can add the, add the t1 to the 20 seconds, to the 5 seconds. So this is equal to 10 seconds, plus 20 seconds, plus 5 seconds, and so that would be equal to 35 seconds. The second question may be, what is the acceleration during the third segment? Right, that's what we're looking for right here. That's what we don't know. And again, therefore, we use the second area, area 2. We can say that area 2 is equal to h, uh, h2 times width 2. And uh, area 2 would be a minus 20 because that would be minus 20 uh, meters per second, because if we go from a plus 20 to zero, that's a decrease of 20 meters per second. The height of that would be the acceleration, A2. I guess I called it A3 there, didn't I? Let me call it A2 so I stay consistent. A2, and then the width of that was given to be five seconds times five, so therefore A2 is equal to minus 20 divided by five, that would be meters per second squared. And so A2 would be equal to minus 4 meters per second squared. And there we found the time during segment 1. We found the acceleration to the last segment right here. And we can find the total time. Again, graphical methods can be very handy to both depict what is happening in the problem and to very easily solve for the unknowns in the problem. And that's how it's done.